guys, my name is Emily. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. I'm wearing the same shirt I pop wear in every single video, but it's because it's my pajama shirt and um, this is all I ever wear. So, new slash. I don't change my clothes. <laughs> okay, so today I'm going to be filming a video talking all about positive self-talk dealing with anxiety. Now, I've been thinking a lot lately that I want to start doing more mental health videos, but like informative ones so, like are helping people and giving people advice and tips. Just from my personal experience, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist. I cannot give you professional advice, but I can give you personal advice and what's worked for me and what's helped me and what I've learned and picked up from my doctors and my psychiatrists and my therapists and psychologists and all those people and stuff I've picked up, stuff has worked for me and stuff that I still use every single day. Anyways, so I just want to start doing that. I think it'd make me feel a lot better knowing I could help someone else and I definitely think it could help somebody who's struggling. Um, even if you don't have a diagnosis of anxiety, I feel like everyone gets anxiety so this is just useful for people who are just naturally like just anxious people. So even if you don't have a diagnosis of anxiety, this could definitely help you if you're stressed out for something or you're just feeling nervous or just yeah, I have a bunch of notes on my phone just talking about positive self-talk for anxiety and I'm really excited to share with you guys what I have collected over the past couple weeks and what I have thought of and um, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I have here is be real with yourself. No sugarcoating. So things as asking yourself, what's the worst that can happen right now? So. For instance, if you are at school and you're nervous you're going to school, what's the worst thing that's going to happen at school? Like, honestly, just tell yourself straight up, okay, like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen if I go here? Or if you're going to the grocery store, what's the worst thing can happen at the grocery store? You panic, you cry in the middle of the grocery store and you have an anxiety attack? Okay, that's life, that's reality, and it happens to people all the time. It's not just you, and if that happens, you pick yourself back up. Maybe you'll leave the grocery store or whatever it is, but just tell yourself, what's the worst can happen? You're at the grocery store. The chance of there being a shooting happen at the grocery store while you're there, very, 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 very slim. Nobody shoots up grocery stores. Come on, seriously. And it's just, that's the part of you that's going to start giving you those anxious thoughts because of your anxiety just telling you invalid information. So just be real with yourself. Don't sugarcoat anything. Just be straight up and be like, you need to stop because what's the worst thing's gonna happen? You know that's I've just always I've had to learn to be very harsh on myself, but in the best way possible. i have being straight up and being like, okay, you need to stop this right now because what's the worst thing that can happen? So that's worked for me. And another thing I have here is, am I gonna let this feeling consume my action? So am I gonna let this anxious feeling stop me from going out? No, because that's gonna make me feel worse and it's gonna consume my anxiety thoughts. And it's just gonna make me feel like crap even more so I'm gonna go out kind of ignore put aside the anxious thoughts and have a good time because sitting at home thinking about all the bad things that could have happened is not gonna fix anything so yeah. all right another thing I have here is the next thing I have on my list is why is this making me feel this way and can I fix it so for example if you're in a situation of being peer pressured um, you can definitely fix that so if someone's trying to peer pressure you into doing something you don't want to do whether it's if someone's trying to peer pressure you into being mean to somebody or just doing something you don't want to do and it's making you anxious you don't have to do it you know you can make your own decisions um, do whatever's in your best interest so if someone's trying to get you to be mean to someone you obviously know that being mean is not right and that's why you're probably feeling anxious because you know deep down that being mean to someone is not going to be the right thing to do. So that's probably why you're going to be feeling anxious in that situation. So you can fix that by just leaving the situation and doing exactly what's in your best interest. So for that, that's something you can fix. But for example, if you are in a store and you just start freaking out, all of a sudden you have like a panic attack and you're just feeling super anxious, you just kind of want to say like okay is there anything happening in my environment right now kind of look around your environment and be like is there anything in this environment that's triggering so you can kind of keep note of what your triggers are and what sets off your anxiety so like if you're in a big group of people in the grocery store or if you're in a group bigger of people at like a party or something like that and you freak out every time you're in a large group of people keep note about okay large groups of people make me anxious 
and just take note of you may need to be a little bit more cautious next time you go into a large group of people because it does trigger your anxiety type thing, you know? Just keep aware of what triggers you, what sets you off, and what really affects your anxiety and your anxious feelings. So, yeah. All right, next thing I have to all right, next thing I have here is telling yourself you are in control of how you act and feel. Don't believe everything you are telling yourself. So, for example, I have, if you're going to have a panic attack, just remember when you start that breathing heavy and the sweaty palms and everything starts to get out of sorts, you kind of want to just get back into reality. And that's when that self-talk really comes in. You really want to kind of close your eyes and just think, okay, I'm in control if I want to totally freak out right now and make this big panic attack, let this big panic attack happen. And I'm in control if, if I want to just roll up in a ball and cry right now or if I want to be strong and just keep going. Not saying that letting your you feel your feelings is being weak because it's not, but I'm just saying you're in control of how you feel. So you're in control if you decide to not go out because you're feeling anxious, you know? And I am guilty of giving in that sometimes. We're all guilty of giving into our anxious thoughts sometimes. But, um, the main thing is you don't let it happen all the time. It's nice to have days off, it's nice to take breaks, especially if you are dealing with anxiety because it gets really tiring after a while, of course. So you just want to tell yourself that you're in control and just knowing that you have that power even if you let yourself fall into a panic attack, that's fine. As long as you have that mindset that I'm in control if I want this panic attack to stop or I want to just let it happen. You're in control of that and just knowing that you have Telling yourself you have the power will make you feel a little better in general, even if you do go ahead and just have a panic attack because you feel like that's what you need to do, which is totally fine. Panic attacks happen and it's just reality sometimes. So just make sure you tell yourself that you're in control regardless of what the situation is, you know? All right. All right. Next thing I have here is how valid are the things you were telling yourself? So we tell ourselves all these fake things all the time, all these invalid immunization, immunizations, all the time. So for example, I'm ugly, are you ugly because you compared yourself to someone on Instagram who has lots of face tune, or are you ugly because you believe you're actually ugly type thing? So how valid are the things you're telling yourself, you know what I mean? So is it, are you really, do you look in the mirror and really see that you were ugly, or do you think you're ugly when you're compared to your friends or to someone you see on Instagram? Or whatever the case might be or do you if you're sitting in a room by yourself you seriously think you're ugly or do you think you're ugly because your friends you might think your friends are prettier than you are or because you compared yourself to someone online type thing so you really want to know you want to really check into yourself and see okay are the things I'm telling myself really true or are they being consumed by other things that are going on around me another example of being controlled of thinking about how valid your things you're telling yourself are is I can't go to school it's scary and everyone hates me which is one I come by a lot is I think everyone hates me and I just tell myself that all the time I'm constantly saying to myself which is negative of course everyone hates me nobody likes me I have no friends all this it's just a common thing that when you're an anxious person or even if you're not as teenagers we tend to tell ourselves a lot that everybody hates us even though it's not true because let me just read my example that I have here do everyone actually hate you so just ask yourself that question. Does everybody in that building at school actually hate you? In fact, even the people you think hate you probably don't. I learned that because I became friends with so many people who I thought hated me as soon as I could start telling myself not everyone actually hates you. Because I feel like once you get that mindset that everyone hates you, you stop trying to communicate with people and you stop trying to, like, you know, talk to the people you think they hate you because you think they hate you so like what's the point of trying but as soon as you open your head and be like you know what not everybody actually hates me you make some friendships because people think if you think people hate you then they don't think you hate them so there's not going to be any communication at all but the second you're able to tell yourself okay not everyone actually hates me and kind of be more open-minded about it um a friendship might potentially happen so I'm friends with people now who I thought hated me but the second I was able to tell myself, you know what, and well, not everybody actually hates you, I was able to make some great friendships. So, that's an example of not everyone actually hates you. So. And even if a few people at school do actually hate you, you know what, that's fine. Because not everyone is going to like you, and that's just reality. Wherever you go, um, you're not always going to be able to please everybody, and that's totally fine. So, you know what, 
Maybe some people at school do hate you. That's fine. So, just don't take it personally. Even though I know it's hard, just try and say, you know what? I'm not everyone's cup of tea. And keep going, you know? Just move on from that. And grow up from that, you know? If you made a mistake in the past and that's why people don't like you, better yourself. You can't go back and change their opinion of you, but you can change the now and change what you do in the future. So, take that and grow from it type thing, you know? So, yeah. All right, now I have some coping mechanisms I'm going to be talking about, which I found very, very, very helpful. I love my coping mechanisms, and I use them every single day of my life, um, even at the point now. I tend to use my self-talk and my coping mechanisms, not even realizing I'm doing them right now because I'm so used to using them. So even after you use them for a while, they'll eventually come a thing that you do like subconsciously and don't even realize you're doing all the self-talk and all these coping mechanisms to help yourself with anxiety um, because that's what I... That's the point I'm at now is I do it and don't even realize I'm doing it, which is really great. So if you just keep practicing them, you'll have them and you'll just use them all the time subconsciously. So for coping mechanisms, I have probably the most common one you'll ever hear and it gets kind of annoying, I know, but I swear when you actually start to do it, it works. And that is focus on your breathing. So literally kind of sit back stand back and literally listen to your breathing so listen to your lungs and listen to your lungs inhaling and listen to your lungs exhaling and just your body letting go to exhale your breath it is a really nice feeling and it really once you focus on your breath you don't have room in your head to focus on anything else so it really just takes your mind off with everything you feel anxious so that's really good the next thing is Do a relaxing activity, whether for you those adult coloring books are relaxing, whether it's yoga, whether it's listening to music, whatever is a relaxing activity to you, dancing, whatever it is, do that because that's going to help you calm down a lot and so just do anything to keep your mind off how you're actually feeling. Next thing I have is count backwards. I remember this being something that people said all the time and I never really believed it but I did it and it worked so basically I like sit back and just kind of or stand or whatever I'm doing even if I'm walking around a store and I feel anxious I'll just start counting it's kind of weird but it works so it's fine I'll like start at 15 and just start counting backwards I like counting backwards because it takes more focus to count backwards whether it does to count forwards but counting backwards definitely takes a little bit more focus um, another thing I see myself doing a lot is counting up by twos or counting up by tens I like to do that a lot or even like counting by like 25 is why I'll do a lot because that takes a lot more focus. So that's really nice. I really like doing that. My dog is barking. My camera is dying. It's not a good time. Uh, Alright, the next thing I have is grounding. I've heard of this a lot and I've tried it a few times. It's not something that I'm great at, but I do like, I've been using it a lot recently because I have been hearing about it. Pretty much grounding is focusing on your surroundings. So taking your five senses and focusing and naming each one in your head to yourself of your five senses. So right now I smell my room being diff rocked and painted. I can feel the hairbrush touching on my floor. I can see my camera on top of a box, me filming right now. So that's something I can see. So that's something I can hear is myself talking, my fan above me, my dog walking around on the floor. So that's just kind of grounding, it's just naming things in your surroundings and that will kind of bring you to the ground and make you feel back into reality. I don't know, it's just something to keep your mind busy. It really does work. I have only used it a couple times, like I said, but I do find it very useful and helpful. The last thing I have for a coping mechanism is cry it out. Whatever you're feeling, you know, let yourself feel it because it's fine to feel it, things like that. It's fine to cry. It's going to be way better for you because it's going to be better than bottling it up and trapping it because then you're going to explode and just cry it out. So if you're in school and you're feeling anxious, go to the bathroom, have a little cry, go back to class, you'll be fine. You know, if you are out in public and you feel like you need to cry, go to the washroom, sit to yourself, have a little cry, and go on with your day. So just let your emotions out. It's okay to feel pain. It's okay to feel your emotions. It's okay to let them portray sometimes because that's sometimes that's the best way to deal with them. So, yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my positive anxiety self-talk and anxiety coping mechanisms. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is just my personal experience, of course, 
and things I've picked up along the way. If you enjoyed this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more of my mental health type videos like this, let me know also. And I will see you guys in my very next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.